Hello and welcome to PlayStation Racer. Today I am back with the very last race in the Menu Book series. This is Menu Book number 46, Historic Sports Car Masters, and it's race three to be held at the Nürburgring. And I'm going to be really sad to see the back of these Menu Books because I have thoroughly enjoyed them. And if you've been following me along, thank you ever so much. If you haven't and you're new to the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button and hit that bell button for notifications. In the meantime, let's get into this video. Now I'm running on the hard settings. I'm rating this after the race because as you can imagine with the Lord Slifer is you've really got to concentrate. I'm in the Sierra RS500 Cosworth, a car that I'm really, really enjoying. And to try and catch up with the leaders, we are really going to have to go for it. So I think that a clean race is definitely out of the question here. I'm almost definitely going to hit a barrier, almost definitely going to run into one of the other cars. But we're going to go for it and see what we can do. We've done OK in the previous two races in this menu, but and for now, it's just a case of trying to remember this track, especially through this little twisty part and just trying not to get into any real problems. I won't go through all the gears and everything on this one and braking points, etc., because I think it tends to be a little bit different for everybody. And also it depends on how these cars are going to fall for everybody. So this one really is just a case of enjoying it. I do love the way that the North Slifer flows it's got some really nice fast parts and some really technical difficult parts like for here you can really be moving but then you've got to get it slowed down before this corner otherwise you're going to run into the right hand barrier then you've got to get it slowed down to third or second gear for this corner which is really really tight and then you can just let it run again up through the gears just looking and thinking about how we can overtake these cars right now and of course because it's so twisty you think that there is going to be an opening on one side or the other of the car that you're following and of course they're going to take the racing line and suddenly that door is closed on you so sometimes you need to think about where you're going to make the move and time it just right to go up the inside or even go around the outside of a car so for instance there i managed to get up the inside of the shelby using quite a lot of the curb in other occasions you might need to hang it around the outside and just be very very brave but one of the things that i have found with this track is to try and stay off the grass the grass is almost definitely going to suck you into barrier or spin you around so here we go we're coming up against this car in front of us i'm going to dive down the inside get it slowed down to hug the apex of that particular border so that was a, a classic overtake move on the Nord Cypher and one that I tend to try and use quite a lot. Doesn't always come off, very often they'll shut the door on you and you're in trouble. Loving the way that this Ford Cosworth is taking these corners. It really doesn't slide around too much, overcooked it there, went a bit too far and hit the barrier so we're quite well into the race and that is the first sort of real mistake that I've made up until this point. I do tend to get carried away sometimes with the speed and then the speed comes and bites you and you're into the barrier. So two cars in front of us, temptation to dive down the inside to do both, the door was closed and we just got the Chevrolet on the way in and we got the Corvette which we need to just think about how we're going to overtake slipstreaming at the moment. That is a quicker car than ours in a straight line. So we're going to need to try and do this under brake and he brakes we just catch the back of him which was a bit unfortunate he broke a little bit earlier than i expected but we did manage to get out of the uh out of the issue we did the overtake and now we get into this beautiful long fast flowing section one of my favorite parts on the track where you can really let it go but you've got to get it slowed down as soon as you see those skid marks just get it slowed down a little bit before you can let it run again. Flat all the way through here. The Sierra Cosworth maxed out at 135, 136 miles an hour. And then we needed to get it slowed down for this corner. The amount of times I have visited that right hand barrier through there is amazing. 
managed to negotiate that really nicely on that part of the track. So still keeping it in three figures on the speed, which is quite nice. We're going to lose a lot of that as we come around this particular bend. We've been into a very tight, twisty section now where we do need to be very, very careful. Looking for the carousel right now, so dash straight into the carousel, pick it up, follow that around, make sure we get a good exit out of the carousel, and then we can let this run again. The amount of times I end up coming out of the carousel early, but managed to do that really nicely on this occasion. Just looking to apex all of these, cam these corners, using the curves, trying to remember where we are, I tend to find that I, I I remember this track more when I'm driving it. Whoops, a bit of oversteer there and into the barrier. That's uh, mistake number two. Yeah, I tend to find that I can remember this track more when I'm driving it. Whether some of that's muscle memory or not, I don't know. I wouldn't have thought so with a track of this length. Um, rather than when I am watching somebody else running it, or like now, watching back one of my own races. So I do tend to find that I prefer running it than narrating it. Down the inside of the Lamborghini there, that was a really nice move for second place. Two and a half seconds off the car in front now, and still quite a lot of the lap to go. Now we know that the Mura in front of us is really quick. We've had battles with this car, in previous races, in particular at Goodwood, where we tried to get side by side through the chicane, which didn't work. So now we are going to need to really work hard to not only get on the back, but get up the, uh, oh well, get up the inside we did. I was just going to say, to get up the inside of the mirror on one of these corners, we actually managed to get that done very quickly. That overtake presented itself and fell in our lap very, very nicely. And it was good to get that done before the really, really long straight that was coming up. We've just got a few tight corners to negotiate, so we're going to need to lose the speed through here. Be careful with the oversteer, just a little bit of a slide through there. Using the kerb on the exit here. Watching for the apex and the carousel on this one. That's a mini carousel. Come out the top, up through the gears. We've got a right-hander coming up. And then we will be looking at a nice left-hander and then on to the long straight. So uh, shows a right-hander, not a left-hander. Um, and then on to the long straight. So at this point, I'm getting a little bit worried about the traffic behind. We've got a five-second lead to the mirror behind, but just look at it falling. 4.9, 4.8, 4.7, 0.6, 4.5, I can't even count down fast enough the amount that mirror is catching us. It's going to be right on our tail as we get to the end of this straight. So we are going to have to be mighty through the last little section. Probably be brave and not break through here. Let's just see if we're flat. Yes, we were flat through there. Just getting it lined up. I did break through here. There we go. Just to get it settled down. A little bit of a squirm. A little bit more breaking as we go through the latter part of the lap. And at that point, with the mirror three seconds behind, that really was job done. And we escaped the fast charging mirror down the long straight and across the line for first place on the North Cypher for what has been a very, very interesting, rewarding and enjoyable menu book to finish off all of the menu books. I've really enjoyed the Historic Sports Car Masters, probably one of my favourite menu books of the year. I re really hope that Polyphony bring back a few more of these menu books for us to do. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed them. They don't give you an awful lot of credits. There are far better ways of getting credits, but they have been really, really enjoyable. So three stamps in our book for this one. We'll head back to the cafe and then just visit Luca for one last time for a congratulations and a ticket. A four star ticket, which is not great for that particular menu book. I'd have really have liked to have got something nice, you know, maybe a nice car or something at the end. So the prize at the end was a little bit uh, of a disappointment, but that's all of the 46 menu books completed. 
We still got a few extra menus to complete where I'm looking for cars. And now we'll be heading off into missions, circuit experiences. We've also got a few more of these races to do. And also I've got a silver on the trophies at the bottom of the uh, of one of the screens that I want to get done. That will probably be one of the next races I'll do. So please follow me along. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. If you have and you can follow me, thanks ever so much. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. For now, take care. Bye-bye.